If you're in high school or graduated, you should know how to do these five problems in your head. If you decide to do them in your head, that's up to you. But I think having a good foundation of these problems is very, very helpful, especially when you're doing more complex math problems that have a lot of steps. We don't wanna to take too much time, but again, doing math in your head is where a lot of mistakes happen, so make sure you're careful. The first example is a fraction divided by another fraction. Remember, a fraction divided by fraction is the same thing as a fraction multiplied by its reciprocal. So simply in this case, I'm gonna have 3 fifths times a two over one, which is simply going to be a six fifths. Remember, when you're adding an integer to a fraction, just simply change your integer to a fraction. Instead of dealing with a one, I can rewrite that as a four over four. I'm gonna just replace that as a four over four. Now, remember adding and subtracting fractions, as long as your denominator is the same, you just apply the operation to your numerator. So in this case, I'm just thinking that's four over four, four plus three is going to be a seven, so therefore the answer is a seven fourths. When simplifying a radical, we always wanna look for what is the largest square number that evenly divides into 50. That answer is going to be 25. 25 goes into 50 two times. I can take the square root of 25, I cannot take the square root of two. The square root of 25 is going to be a five, and two is gonna remain under the radical. Square numbers, you should, most students remember the square numbers up to 10. I highly advise knowing square numbers at least up to 15. And if you wanna be a little bit special, go all the way up to 25. But definitely this, the kind of like sweet spot between you know, 10 and 15 is still comes up quite a bit. And a lot of students just don't know and they never practice them or study them. So make sure you know at least 10 to 15 and maybe a little higher if you want to. But 15 squared is going to be 225. Simplifying radicals is a process that you should be very, very accustomed to. And once you do a little practice of this, it's not too bad to be able to do this in your head. We know to get the radical off the denominator, I need to multiply by the square root of three on the top and the bottom. So now we can simply just multiply straight across. But again, in my head, I know I'm multiplying by the square root of three on the top and the bottom and multiplying straight across. So therefore this is going to be two square root of three. And then any radical multiplied by itself is going to be, you just multiply those two radicands or it's gonna be, you know, whatever the multiply product is. But square root of three times square root of three is going to be square root of nine, which is gonna give you an answer of three.